Hello lovely people! In this Amigurumi crochet tutorial, I show you how to crochet this little tiger. I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. Welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you've been crocheting along with me for a while. Thank you so much for your patience. The tiger is the animal that won in my latest poll on what to crochet next. And here it finally is. A big, big thanks to the lovely people who tested the pattern for me. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of your help. And so before we get started, I just want to mention you can also find the free written pattern in the description box below. That You can find that on my website. And you can also purchase the PDF version of the pattern um, on Etsy or Ravelry. You can find the links to those in the description box below. They're available for a small fee in case you'd like to have them, have them in PDF form so you can look at them offline or if you need lots of images. Um, they have images of all the different steps of the embroidery and everything. And there's also a Ribbler version available if you are on Ribbler. If you're not, I highly recommend it. And so without further ado, let's get into what materials and tools we need to crochet this little tiger. If you want your little tiger to be this size, you will need four ply or fingering weight yarn. I used Shapies Katona. This shade is called Sweet Orange, I believe. And then I have a natural white. I think it's called Bridal White. So it's not the brilliant white, it's the a slightly darker shade of white that I used. But you could also use DK or light worsted weight yarn for a similar result in size. And if you would like it to be larger than this, then you could also use heavier yarn like Aran or worsted yarn. But then I recommend sizing up the hook. For this yarn, four ply fingering yarn or DK, light worsted weight yarn, I recommend this hook which is 2.5 millimeters. That's something in between a size C2 or B1. Um, you will be fine in most cases with a size C2, but if you are new to amigurumi and you tend to crochet quite loosely, I recommend going for a size B1 instead. And so, yeah, if you want to size the whole amigurumi up for um, if you're using Aran or worsted weight yarn, I would recommend going for a 3.5 millimeter hook. So that's a size E4. And so on and so on. Of course, you can upscale as much as you like. You can even make a cuddly tiger with blanket yarn and a much larger hook. Just always um, check what hook is recommended for the yarn you're using and then down, uh, go down a bit in size because it's amigurumi we are crocheting, which is a bit different. So we always choose a slightly smaller hook than recommended so that we don't have any gaps showing in between the stitches so that our stuffing doesn't show through our fiber fill. The next thing we need is embroidery floss. We need a lot of it. So this will be just about enough. So this is just a cotton thread. Um, any brand really. It's eight meters, 8.7 yards. Just a regular embroidery thread. And then we need some fiber fill, of course. I used five millimeter safety eyes. I just used the black ones, but of course you could also, if you find um, colored ones in this size, then you can go for that if you like. We also need a yarn needle. I love these with bent hook. They're really nice for sewing on body parts. 
then we need a smaller needle I, I'm just using a sewing needle like a large eyed sewing needle for the embroidery um, it's, mine is already bent a little bit the important thing is that it's pointy because we want to go through the crocheted stitches through the fibers not in between stitches then I have a stitch marker here oh also I sometimes use pliers to help me with the embroidery if the needle gets stuck it's helpful uh, to use these pliers to pull them out but it's not necessary so don't worry if you don't have one of these and then also we need some pins later on when we do the assembly and scissors of course we start with the legs and so we take our orange yarn and begin by making a magic ring just make sure to leave an eight centimeter or 20 no sorry a 20 centimeter or eight inch long end and then make a magic ring using your preferred method then make the magic ring a bit smaller and now we start with 10 single crochet in the magic ring in round one so just make sure to work over both of these it's one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten now what is a bit unusual is we take this yarn tail we bring it through the magic ring so that we will have it on the outside of our work because that's where we will need it very soon and I received a really great tip from one of you. I'm so sorry, I can't remember who of you lovely people mentioned this in the comments, but you can now place a stitch marker in the first stitch of round one before closing the magic ring. Actually, in round two, we will only crochet in the back loop, so in this case, you can even place it in the back loop only and then we close the magic ring and this way it will be much easier to work in the stitch in round two I've always been complaining about how difficult it is to crochet in the first stitch of round two once the magic ring is properly closed and this tip really helped me so thank you so much for that I've been using it ever since you mentioned it so now we can remove this and like I mentioned in round two we crochet in the back loops only and so we start with a single crochet in the first back loop here from which we just removed the stitch marker that's one single crochet and now we make four decreases and so these decreases go in the back loops so we insert our hook in the back loop of the next stitch and the back loop of the next stitch um, an easy way to do this is just to get your hook in between front and back loop of the next stitch and then just turn it 180 degrees And this way you should get the second back loop on your hook. And then pick up the yarn and pull it through both back loops and finish this single crochet. So that's our first back loop decrease done. We have three more of these. So go in the back loop and the next back loop.
pull the yarn through both back loops here. The second one is always a bit tricky. You can just twist your hook as much as possible to get it through. It's two done. Three. And four. And now in the back loop of the last stitch, we'll just make a single crochet. And that's round two done. In round three and four, we'll simply single crochet in all six stitches of the round. So starting here. Just single crochet one in each of the six stitches. That's round three done, and we'll repeat the same for round four. Six single crochet. And this is round four done. In round five, we increase slightly. We begin with two single crochet. One in the first. One in the second. And in the third stitch of the round, we increase. So two single crochet go in the third stitch here. And we repeat these steps. So two single crochet, one in the next stitch. One in the next. And an increase in the last stitch of the round. That's round five done. In round six, we simply single crochet in all eight stitches that our round now has. So just one single crochet in each. And that's the last stitch of the round done. And this means the foreleg, the first foreleg is already done. So we finish with a slip stitch in the next stitch. And then we can fasten off. So now you can repeat all of these steps to create the second foreleg and then you can repeat all of these steps again without fastening off though. 
because the hind legs are almost identical, they just have an extra round. And so you can open the description box below and click on the timestamp next to legs. And um, that's where it will lead you to the beginning of the tutorial in which we started the legs. And then once you're making the third leg, don't fasten off and continue with me to round nine, which we'll crochet to create the hind legs. So now I've finished my two forelegs and I completed round six of this hind leg. The hind legs have a round seven. And so in round seven, we single crochet three, one, two, three, and then we increase in the fourth stitch here. So two single crochet in here. And we repeat all this once more, three single crochet, and an increase in the last stitch here. Two single crochet in the same stitch. And so that's round seven done, and this means the hind leg is done. We just finish with a slip stitch again, a slip stitch in the next stitch here, and then we fasten off. We don't need a long yarn in here, and so now you can repeat all of these steps to crochet the second hind leg, and then we can go ahead and shape the paws. Before we start, I just like to mention that I often receive the question if you can attach the legs to the belly, which we'll do in just a bit before shaping the paws, because this makes it easier to, you know, even if you don't get the position of the legs right, if the paw faces slightly inward or outward, then it will be much easier to fix if you haven't shaped them yet because you can then shape them in a way um, that they point forward. And my answer to this is you can absolutely do this. If you want to do it, um, you can go ahead, open the description box below and click on the timestamp next to belly so you can crochet the belly and then attach the legs before doing this. I still like to do it before attaching the legs because to me it's just this um, point here, the, this is the last stitch of round one where this tail end comes out. This to me is just, just makes the perfect heel and the opposite side is then the front of the paw. It just um, makes sense to me this way. So um, I like to still do it before attaching the legs but of course you can change the order of doing this um, it's just also when you make many of these little four-legged animals and after a while you really get the hang of where to insert the hook when attaching the legs in order for the paws to face forward um, and so this yarn tail like i said to me it's like the heel and so um yeah the back of the paw and so here we have the single crochet single crochet and here we have the four decreases decreases which is why i made it this way so that it already looks a bit flat on this front end and so the first thing we do is we insert our needle that has the yarn tail on it in the center of the magic ring and it should come out on the opposite side of this heel, this back of the paw, somewhere here, just somewhere in round two really. 
and move it a little bit further yeah just bring this through then we insert the needle in the center of the magic ring again so this is now the center front of the paw so next we make a stitch slightly more toward the left no actually this was better maybe and we pull this nice and tightly so that's our center stitch now we make another stitch slightly to the right of the center stitch this center stitch here again going through the center of the magic ring and exiting to the right of the center stitch pulling it nice and tight and so that's almost done now we just go through this center of the magic ring once more and we just bring the needle through somewhere to weave in the yarn end a bit to secure it first pull this nice and tight so now we have three little stitches that help further flatten the paw to make it look more paw like and if you look at it from the bottom you can see that there are these one two three stitches and this is the one that marks the back and so now we just weave in this yarn end a bit to secure this last stitch just making a few stitches here to weave that in should be enough and then we can use the remaining yarn end as a light filling for the leg they shouldn't be stuffed they actually don't need a proper filling but since we have these yarn ends anyway we might as well use them now as some light filling and anything that's too much we can just cut off we can use those yarn ends to fill the body later on so that's the paw done you can repeat these steps with the other three legs and then we'll go ahead and crochet the belly now we'll go ahead and crochet the belly and i'll be using white yarn for this if all the color changes and carrying the contrast color that's currently not in use through the stitches is too much for you at the moment, I recommend just crushing the whole tiger in orange. I think it would still look very much like a tiger. So don't worry about that if color changes are a bit too much for you at the moment. So we begin by making a little loop, making a slip knot, and then we chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll make six single crochet, beginning here in the second chain. There we go, single crochet one, and then single crochet one in the next chain, and so on. That's three, four, five, and six 
Now we have one chain left here and then that one with single crochet four and so we'll make two single crochet from this side one two and then turn our work and still single crochet in the same chain but already turn our work around to crochet in the other direction that's three and four so that's our four single crochet in the last chain then we single crochet five one in each chain from the other side so i'll just place them exactly on the opposite side of the um single crochet that's already in there so that means here in these little gaps so that's one one goes in here so as you can see the two single crochet are now on opposite sides one here one there so four more like this two three four and five and in this space here in which we crochet the first single crochet we'll now make three more single crochet so that we'll have four on this side as we have on this side and in the last one of these three single crochet we'll change to orange so in there single crochet one and two and three changing to orange now so I'll just pull the orange yarn through the two white loops and that's the belly done already in the next round we'll attach the legs and so we can leave the white yarn for now but don't fasten it off we'll need it later we'll continue in orange for now and so now imagine that this is the belly and the right side here is the rear and the left side is the front so that's how it will look now we take one of the hind legs and we'll attach it in this way so the paw is facing forward to the front and we'll attach this hind leg by inserting the hook in on the inner leg which is here and we'll go for the center of the inner leg so if we turn it around this is in this case on this side the inside so we just find the center of this side um, which I would say is here so for me that's from the slip stitch one two three stitches apart the next stitch would probably be okay as well I'm going with the third one counted from the back and so we go through here now we single crochet in orange in all 10 stitches of the hind leg that's one two 
three. Now I'm at this lip stitch, so I'll crochet in this lip stitch. Just make sure not to also crochet in the stitch underneath it. So this one is now done. Just pull this yarn end a bit tight. More tight. And so this one is the next one. This is five. Six. Seven. I have my yarn in coming out there. Just gonna hide that again. We have enough yarn ends to deal with here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is where I was. Eight. Nine. And ten. So now we crochet all around the hind leg. And the next stitch will go in the belly, in the first stitch of the belly here and with this single crochet we change back to white. So we go through here, through this first stitch, pulling all yarn ends nice and tightly. Then we pick up the orange yarn, put it through the stitch, pull this in place and now we'll continue in white. So we take the white yarn, pick up a loop, pull it through the two orange loops. So that's the first leg attached. So for now we'll continue crocheting in white, but we also carry the orange yarn through our white stitches because we'll need it again soon when we attach the next leg. And so the way I like to do this is I lay the two colors over my index finger and they are separated by this knuckle. And then I hold them in place with my little and ring finger. That's um, somehow easiest for me. If that seems tricky to you, there are other methods. You could also just let the orange yarn that you're carrying through hang loose and just make sure to crochet around it. So either of these versions work or maybe you have your own technique for this. So the way we do this is we insert our hook in the next stitch and then we go under the orange yarn and pick up the white yarn and pull it through underneath the orange yarn. So now we have two white loops on our hook and then we go over the orange yarn to pick up the white yarn again and pull it through the two loops. So now we have a white stitch and the orange yarn is hidden inside. So we do this again. So this is our first of five single crochet. This is the second. And again, we go under the orange yarn, pick up the white yarn, pull it through underneath the orange, and then go over the orange yarn to pick up the white yarn again and pull it through the two loops. That's two. Once in a while, give the orange yarn a tug to make sure it's not showing through the stitches. That's three, four, five. So one final tug of the orange yarn. Don't pull it too tightly though. You just want to, you don't want there to be any orange loops showing through or anything like that. Now in the next single crochet, we change back to orange. And so we pick up the white yarn as usual, 
pull it through and then we pick up the orange yarn and pull it through there are two white loops so now it's time to join the first four leg and we join the four legs by finding the back of the four leg so here you can see this this front loop maybe that's the last stitch of the round um, in this second round in which we crocheted in the back loops we can see these exposed front loops and so that kind of marks the back so this last stitch here this slip stitch would be the back and we go slightly inward so in this case to the right so i'll join the foreleg in the next stitch uh, in the stitch to the right of the slip stitch if that makes sense this one here and then we single crochet in all eight stitches of the foreleg that's one the second one goes in the slip stitch here give that yarn in and pull four five six seven and in the eighth and last stitch we change to white so we pull an orange loop through we can drop the orange yarn here we'll change back to orange very soon so we don't really need to carry it through this one stitch and then we take the white yarn and pull it through the two orange loops just pull that nice and tightly and that's it next we'll single crochet in the next stitch of the belly which is this one here or it's actually the chest now one single crochet goes in here and now in the next single crochet we already change back to orange so the next one goes in here Pulling the white yarn through and here again we can drop the white yarn we don't need to carry it through yet and pick up the orange yarn again and pull it through the two white loops so now we can go ahead and attach the second foreleg and so with the second foreleg it's the same we attach it on the back of the leg which you can say is yeah, somewhere here and more to the inside so this this time we're going more to the left slightly more to the left so we're not quite at the back I think starting with this last stitch, the slip stitch, will be fine. So we insert our hook in the slip stitch, single crochet one, and then single crochet in the remaining seven stitches of the foreleg that's two three four five six
seven and once again in the eighth and last stitch of the foreleg we change to white so here just pull the orange yarn through for now drop the orange yarn and pull the white loop through So now we'll carry the orange yarn through the white stitches once again and so again I'm holding the two colors apart over my index finger and so we single crochet in the next five stitches now. So this one we already crocheted in, so this is the next one here. Again, carrying the orange yarn through. That's one, two, three, four. And five, bring the orange yarn a little tug, making sure all paws are pointing forward. That looks good. Now in the next single crochet, we'll change to orange. So we begin the single crochet in white and then pick up the orange yarn. And for now we can drop the white yarn. We'll continue in orange for now. We'll make one more stitch here in the belly. So now it's time to attach the last leg. And so this is our leg. And as with the other hind leg we begin attaching it at the center on the inside of the leg so it goes on like this so this is the inside and then we find the center so we would say that's here so that's where I make the first single crochet in and then we just single crochet and all 10 stitches of the hind leg one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, this is the slip stitch, and ten. And then we just have two stitches left here, these two white ones. We just make one single crochet in each. One and two. And this is the round complete. Just want to check on the pause real quick. Yeah, it looks like they are all facing forward, so they're all out, thankfully. And so. Now just place my stitch marker in the last stitch and then we're ready for round three of the body. So round three begins with a decrease. So we start here by going through the front loop of the first stitch and the front loop of the second stitch and we'll pick up the yarn, pull it through and pick up the yarn, pull it through the two loops. Then we single crochet in the next seven. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, And seven. Now we have another decrease, and with this decrease, we will change to white. So don't worry about the white yarn just yet. First, we go through the next two front loops. Front loop one. And front loop two, pick up the orange yarn, pull it through, and now we find the white yarn and pull it through the two orange loops. So from now on, we'll just carry the, always carry the other color through. Um, it's just for a few rounds until um, the white belly is completely done. So now we'll make four single crochet in white. So this white one here is actually the first or the next one, two, Three, four, and then we change color to orange in the next single crochet. So now orange goes on top, white goes on the bottom, and so now we have a decrease. So we go in the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the next stitch pick up the orange yarn and pull it through both front loops pick it up again and pull it through the two loops now we single crochet in the next four stitches. So now we carry the white yarn through the orange stitches. That's one, two, three, and four. And in the next single crochet, we'll change back to white. So pick up the orange yarn and then the white yarn. Now we single crochet one in white. And then we have two decreases in a row. So the first one goes in here in the front loop of this last orange stitch and the front loop of this first white stitch. That one is really tight. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that didn't work out. So again, picking up the white yarn, pulling it through the two front loops and then Picking up the white yarn again and pulling it through the two loops. And now we have one more decrease. So this one goes in the front loop of this last white stitch and the first orange stitch. And we pick up the white yarn from behind 
the orange yarn, pull it through and then go over the orange yarn to pick up the white yarn and pull it through the two white loops. And that's how it looks. So that's normal that this orange loop shows there. Now in the next single crochet we change back to orange. So here we pick up the white yarn and then the orange yarn and now orange goes on top. Then we have five single crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we decrease, changing to white. So we go through the front loop of this last orange stitch here and the front loop of this first white stitch there we go and pick up the orange yarn from behind the white yarn pull it through the front loops and then pick up the white yarn and pull it through the two orange loops. So now white goes on top. Next we have four single crochet. This here is the next one. One, two, three and four and in the next single crochet we'll change to orange there we go so orange goes back on top now we'll decrease So we'll crochet this front loop and the next one together. Pick up the yarn behind the white yarn. And there we go. Then we have seven single crochet. One. two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we decrease one last time for this round. And then we single crochet in the last two stitches of the round. So one here. And one here. And this is round three done. And in round four, we still carry the white yarn through the orange stitches. Then in the next round, we won't be using the white yarn anymore. But for now, we begin with eight single crochet. One, two, Three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. In the next single crochet, we change to white. So pick up the orange yarn and then the white yarn. Now white goes on top. And we single crochet in the next four stitches. So this first white one is the first one, two, three, and four. Then we change back to orange in the next single crochet. And switch colors. Now we have four single crochet in orange. One, two, three, and four. And in the next stitch, we change to white. There we go. Switching colors once again. Here we have five single crochet in white. One, two, three, four, and five. And in the next single crochet, we change to orange. Now we have four single crochet in orange. One, two, three, and four. And in the next single crochet, we change to white. Now we have four single crochet in white. One. Two, three, four, and now we change to orange in this last white stitch here. And now, although we won't be using white for the body anymore. We still carry the white yarn through the stitches because we want it to be here in the neck area because that's where we'll next use it. And so now we have 11 stitches left in the round. One, two, Three, four, 
five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And eleven. And this is round four done. So now in round five, we single crochet 19. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, And nineteen. So here we can actually leave the white yarn, and that's where we'll be using it next so we don't fasten it off. And so now we'll create the opening for the neck. So we want to make sure that this white yarn and is somewhere here where the neck opening will go. Now we chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we skip the next six stitches. Now this is easy because they are all the white stitches here. So we will single crochet in this first orange stitch here, making sure not to twist this chain of 10. And that's it. That's the opening for the neck that we will later crochet the neck out of. So it's really important that the white yarn end is here and not behind this chain. And so now we just complete the round by single crocheting in the remaining 20 stitches. 21 if you include this one we just made. So I'll just let you go ahead with this. You can pause the video here and hit play for the next round. Round five is complete now. And in round six, we'll just single crochet in all stitches and in these 10 chains. So I'll let you go ahead and do the first 19 single crochet on your own. So once again, you can pause the video here and make the first 19 single crochet. So once you reach this chain of 10, you just single crochet one in each chain, just picking up the back loop of each chain. 
So the front loop is what we'll crochet the neck out of, out of the front loops here. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And so now all that's left to do is crochet in the 21 remaining stitches, starting with this one here. So I'll let you get on with this. You can just pause the video and complete the round on your own. So this is round six done. And in round seven, we begin with 16 single crochet. That's five, that's ten, Fifteen and sixteen. And so next we'll have eight decreases in a row. So we make eight invisible decreases, single crocheting the front loops of two stitches together. That's number two. Three, four, five, six. Seven, and eight. And that's all the decreases done. And now we can just single crochet in the remaining 18 stitches. So you can pause the video here and hit play for Round eight. Round seven is complete and our round has 42 stitches now. So in round eight, we'll continue decreasing. We begin with five single crochet. And then we make an invisible decrease. And we repeat this five more times, six times altogether. So you can pause the video here and continue with this series of stitches, five single crochet and one decrease all the way to the end of the round.
That's round eight complete. Our round has now 36 stitches. And in round nine, we continue decreasing. So here we begin with two single crochet. Then we decrease. And now we make four single crochet. And decrease and we repeat this four more times five times all together four single crochet and one decrease ignore the two single crochet in the beginning so I'll let you pause the video and let you get get on with that we'll have two remaining single crochet of the round once you're done with this. So I made four more or in total five repetitions of the four single crochet and one decrease. And so now I have two single crochet left here. So we just single crochet one in each of them. And that is round nine complete. So now we have a stitch count of 30. And we continue decreasing in round three. So here we begin with three single crochet. One, two, three, and then we decrease. And we repeat these three single crochet and one decrease five more times, six times in total. Three single crochet and one decrease. So once again, you can pause the video and continue with this series of stitches. That is round 10 complete. So now our round has 24 stitches. In the next round, we continue decreasing. So this time we start with one single crochet. Then we make a decrease. And then we make two single crochet. followed by a decrease and we repeat the two single crochet and one decrease four more times five times in total and then we'll have one single crochet left in the end of the round so once again you can pause the video here and join me for the end of this round So I made five repetitions in total of the two single crochet and one decrease. And now I have one single crochet left in the round. And that's done. So now our round has 18 stitches. I'm just going to secure my stitch now because now is a good time to fill the body with fiber fill. You can fill it through this opening or even through the neck opening. This will just make it easier to close the back here after making the last two rounds. So we'll generously fill the back. That's probably enough. Otherwise it will be difficult to finish the last two rounds.
there we go. So in the next round, we'll begin with one single crochet. I'll just now hold my amigurumi this way so that I don't work the fiber fill into my stitches. One single crochet and then we make a decrease. And we repeat this five more times. Six times all together. One single crochet and one decrease. There we go. One single crochet and one decrease. Once it gets too tight in there for your finger to push the fiber fill out of the way, you can kind of squeeze the amigurumi together and that's, that helps a bit when making these decreases. Just once in a while you can push fiber fill back in. Um, that was three, I believe. So three more of these repetitions. One single crochet. And one decrease. One single crochet and one decrease and one last time, one single crochet and one decrease. So that's the round done and our stitch count is 12. So now we just have one round to go for the back in which we'll make six decreases in a row. So let's see how we can do this best. Yeah, I think I go for the squeeze technique. <laughs> Just squeezing the amigurumi together until I get a hold of this front loop. That's one. Two. Three, four, five. And six. So that's the back done. So now we can fasten off. Not the white yarn though, we still need that for the neck later on. And now we just push the fiber fill back there. Just make sure that body is nicely filled before closing the back. 
now we can actually add some more through this neck opening And then we thread this end on a yarn needle and close the back by going through the front loops of all six stitches. So oh, this is actually the first one. Don't pull it too tight just yet. It's two. Three, four, five, six. Now we can pull it tight and then insert the needle in the center of this last round and stitch through somewhere on the body. And pull that nice and tight so that the back evens out. And now we just weave in this yarn end with a few stitches. And then cut it short. Now we can crochet the neck out of this opening. And so we begin with the white yarn that we left here. And so we start by inserting our hook in this first white stitch here at the opening. And that's where we join this white yarn that's coming out of there so we just pull it through and then we start crocheting in the next stitch here so we make four single crochet one two three and four and now in the fifth single crochet here we join the orange yarn back in and so I'm going to start crocheting this stitch in white a white loop through and then take the orange yarn and pull it through the two white loops there we go now we'll continue in orange so orange goes on top and we'll work the white yarn into our stitches and we'll crochet in the other side of these 10 chains that we made here. And so the first one is this one here. So I'm just probably, I'm just gonna get my hook in there like this from the other side, that might be easier. There we go. And I'm just holding this newly joined orange yarn in there in place and then we single crochet in the next nine chains in the other side of these nine chains working the white yarn into our stitches that's two
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now when we crochet in the 10th chain, we change color back to white. So this one here is the last chain. And we pull the orange loop through and then the white loop through the two orange loops. And we have one stitch left to go. And this is the first one here that we, in which we first joined the white yarn. So that's where our last single crochet goes. And now we carry the orange yarn through our white stitches. Um, that's the first round of the neck complete. Now we can hide this yarn end inside. And the next round we start again with four single crochet in white. One. I only had the front loop there. It's two. Three and four. Now in the next stitch we change color to orange. So orange goes on top. And now we single crochet in the next nine stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Now in the next stitch we change back to white and we can actually leave the orange yarn here. Don't need to carry it through the last stitch. We just have one more single crochet. That's the round complete. And then we finish with a slip stitch in the next stitch. And so now we just leave two long yarn ends. We'll need those to attach the head later on. So we leave both of them quite long. 12 inches or 30 centimeters, I would say at least. And that is the neck done. So now we can go ahead and crochet the head. We begin with the white yarn. And so we make a magic ring. And we start with a six single crochet in the magic ring. Now a 
using this really useful trick again. So I just put the stitch marker in the first single crochet, close the magic ring. And now in round two, we begin with an increase. So two single crochet in here. And then another increase, two single crochet in the second stitch, and in the next increase, we change color in the second single crochet. We, so we make our first single crochet in the next stitch, and we make another one in here, and with this one, we join the orange yarn. So I just pull an orange loop through the two white loops. Now we have two increases in a row, regular increases, two single crochet in the next, and two single crochet in the next stitch. And now in the last stitch, we change back to white. First we have one single crochet in orange and then the second single crochet in the same stitch that makes the increase. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> in that stitch we change back to white. This is round two done. And so now in round three, we can start carrying the other color that's not in use through the stitches. So we begin with five single crochet. One, two, Three, four, five, and then in the next single crochet we change it to orange, and then again we have five single crochet, one, Two, three, four, five, and in the last stitch we change to white. And that's round three done. We begin round four with an increase. And then we make a single crochet in the next stitch. Once in a while, just give the orange yarn or the, the yarn that you're carrying through, whichever color, a gentle tug. Now we repeat this, so increase in the next stitch and a single crochet in the next. Then we increase once more. And 
And in the next single crochet, we change to orange. And we continue this way. Now we have an increase in the next stitch again. And single crochet in the next. And repeat an increase in the next stitch. and single crochet in the next and then another increase and then in the last stitch we single crochet and change to back to white and this is round four complete in round five, we start with an increase again. And this time we single crochet in the next two stitches. And then we repeat this. Increase in the next stitch and single crochet in the next two one two and we repeat it again one increase and two single crochet Again. Just a reminder to you regularly give the yarn that's carried through a gentle tug. Now we have another increase. And we change color to orange in the second single crochet of the increase. So one in white and then one in the same stitch in which we change to orange so orange goes on top then we single crochet two and increase single crochet two and increase and then we single crochet one and in the last stitch of the round we change color to white in a single crochet and that's the round complete in round six we start with 14 single crochet it's five
and 14. Now in the next single crochet, we change to orange. And then now we single crochet in the next eight stitches. Eight, and now we change color to white in the last stitch in a single crochet, and that's the round complete. In round seven, we start again with fourteen single crochet. It's 14. Then we change color to orange in the next single crochet. And now we single crochet in the remaining nine stitches of the round. And that's nine, and that's the end of the round. And now I'm going to secure my stitch because now is a good time to insert the safety eyes and embroider the nose and mouth. So I'm just going to place my stitch marker in here so that I don't lose my stitch. We don't fasten off any of the yarn, we still need both colors. And we take our safety eyes, I'm using five millimeter safety eyes, and we'll attach them in between, in between round five and six with about four stitches space in between. And so I'm using my little scissors to make some space for them. So that's round one, two, three, four, five. So this is where they go. So this orange part marks the top of the head. So I'm just thinking about where to place them. Maybe here, one here. I'm just carefully making some space for them without damaging any of the fibers. So I can still change my mind. It shouldn't be a problem. So I have four stitches space. So let's see how that looks. We can insert our safety eyes and still change our mind later. That should be a problem. So let's try this out. And I think that's looking good. So I'm going to stick with this placement. Now we're going to embroider the face. So we start with the outline of the eyes. So don't secure the safety eyes yet. It's easier, much easier to make the embroidery around the eyes 
before that. And so now we need our black embroidery floss and we need about 60 centimeters, which is 24 inches, I believe. For now, we're just embroidering the face, um, not the, I mean, by face, I mean just the eyes, the outline of the eyes and the nose and mouth. We'll embroider the stripes later. And so now we need our large eyed sewing needle, the pointy one, and thread this embroidery thread on it and so now we begin with the eyes and so we can now start at the inner corner of one of the eyes so with a little bit space like half a single crochet stitch length I would say um, from the safety eye that's where we can insert our needle from the inside out and make sure to stitch through the fibers. Like don't stitch through, don't go through, let's go for this one here, in between stitches because then there's no control over where exactly the stitch goes. So really go through the fibers so that the thread can't and the needle can't move around. So that's a good placement, I think, for the inner corner of the eye. So I'm just going through here. And we just need a short end here that we'll tie together. Once that's done, and we begin now by making the um, this lower um, eye line, so to speak. Let's see. Actually, I'm placing the in the inner corner of the eye actually a little bit more inward, I think, because later. We want everything to nicely overlap. We don't want there any gaps to be in the eye line, so that will make that easier. That's where I place it. And then leave a little bit of an end there, long enough to tie together. So now we'll decide where we want the outer corner to go. So I'm just making a diagonal line, like here's where the nose is gonna go. I'm just gonna make it an extended line from there and so just going to go through here again leaving a little bit of space like maybe yeah it's actually like half a single crochet stitch length space more or less pull the thread through here and this is going to be the, the lower eye line. And now we insert our needle from the inside out, really, really close to this point where we just went through, but a little bit outward of it, tiny bit next to it outward facing pull that through so now we're making the upper eye line and so if you divide this space that doesn't have an eye line yet this part here if you divide it in half then just go through now this time from the outside inward wherever the halfway point is making sure to catch some fibers, not just stitching through in between stitches. Go through there. So 
So that's half of the upper eye line done. Now from the inside out, we go here just below this um, inner corner of the eye that we created here, just below that. Pull that through. And now we go through this halfway point here that we went through before. Go through that again. And that's the eye line for the first eye complete. Now we can move straight to the next eye and try to mimic this. Like try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So we're going to choose a spot for the inner corner of this eye. Going a bit more downward or outward, I should say. Mm -hmm. Pull that through. And now we make the lower eye line. So we'll pick a spot for the outer corner of the eye. Now we stitch through just underneath that spot or next to it, more outward facing, because we want this stitch to overlap with that one. And now again, we find the halfway point of this part, more or less. Just going to go through here, pull that through. Now we'll go th through just below this inner corner of the eye point. And again, insert our needle in the halfway point of the upper eye line. And that's the second eye done. Oh, that turned out nicer. Oh, but that one's all right. <laughs> so that's the eyes done. Now we can go straight to the nose and embroider the nose and then the mouth. For the nose, we want to begin more or less at the center of the magic ring here, but we don't want to go exactly in there because um, then our needle would, would move around too much. So I'm aiming for just a spot just beneath it, just a little more downward so that I catch some fibers and have more control over this stitch. And then pull this tight and yeah, just make sure that it's not too tight and causing too much tension inside the head. So we begin making the nose by creating a V shape and the V shape is quite shallow. So I'm aiming for a spot somewhere here, but it's about one single crochet stitch long, more or less. And yeah, making sure to catch some fibers there. Then we go through this center spot again. And repeat this on the other side.
I'm just making sure that it's more or less symmetrical. And then we fill this um, shallow V shape by repeatedly going through the same spot here. And then we go through just next to this previous spot. And we aim to cover everything that's wide here. So I'm going through here. And again, going through the center spot. Be careful sometimes that the thread doesn't get tangled here on the inside of the head. So now I'm going through here. And we just repeat this until the nose is filled. And that's the nose filled. Just a quick comparison. If you feel that it's a bit small, you can always add on um, to each side. So I might do that. Or maybe not because it's really difficult to get through there. <laughs> Can only do so many stitches, stitches through the same spot. So now I'm going through one of the upper corners here. And then through the other upper corner because I want to make a nice and neat upper side here of this nose. And that's it. I'm just going to try to make one more stitch. just on this side here because this is a straight line and this is a slightly bent line which is bothering me a little bit so I just wanted to look the same on both sides so I'm going 
through here once more. Yeah, I think that's better. So now all that's left to embroider is the mouth. And so we need to go through this spot here again, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's getting harder every time. That's why sometimes I use pliers, but so far I was able to cope without. Now we just make a very tiny stitch downward, like maybe half a yeah half a single crochet stitch length downward, straight downward, going through here. That's it. And now we make the mouth by making a longer stitch, one on each side, about two, um, two single crochet stitches long. Let me just compare. Yeah, so if you go down on the side of the nose, a little bit wider. It's a little bit wider than the nose. So, yeah, I think that's good. And it's a little bit lower than this spot here. Now we go through the center spot again, this little bit lower one here that we just created. There we go. Now we just repeat this on the other side, trying to make a symmetrical stitch. I think that's a good spot. Let's see how that turns out. And again through the center spot here for the mouth. So now we can go ahead and tie the thread ends together. And then we can go ahead and secure the safety eyes. That's one side done. And the other side. So Uh, 
on this side the stitch get covered a bit by the eye so just to i mean both looks fine i just want it to look the same way so on this side i'm just trying to pull out the stitch a little bit from under the eye Or I'll just hide it a bit here on this side. I'm gonna tuck it under the eye. <laughs> now we can continue crocheting the head. And so we left off at round eight. So in round eight, we start with one single crochet in which we change to white. Then we single crochet in the next three stitches. And here we make a decrease. Sorry, I'm looking at my pattern in, the, in between. So now we have four single crochet. One, two, three, four, and another decrease. Now we single crochet one in the next stitch and one in the next, changing to orange. And that's just some embroidery thread showing through there. So now we've changed to orange and we just single crochet in the remaining 10 stitches. In round nine, we change to white again in the first single crochet. Then we single crochet two. And decrease. Then single crochet three. and decrease then we single crochet one and change color to orange in the next single crochet Here we single crochet one 
then we decrease one. and single crochet in the next five stitches. And finish the round with, with a decrease. And that's round nine done. So now is actually a good time to add some fiber fill to the head. I actually forgot to use these yarn ends for filling the body, so I'm just going to use them here for the head. Starting with them. And then adding some more fiber fill. So just adding small portions. You can use the back of your hook to push it in and make sure it's distributed evenly. We also want some to go in between the safety eyes. That should be enough for now. We can still add more after the next round. In round 10, we start with changing color again. Changing color to white in a single crochet. Then we have a decrease right away. And we single crochet in the next stitch and decrease. Single crochet in the next stitch and decrease again. Now in the next single crochet we change to orange and then we have a decrease in the next two stitches crocheting the next two stitches together I mean then we single crochet in the next decrease again And one more single crochet and one more decrease. And so that's the round done. So now is the last opportunity to add more fiber fill to the head. So that's what we're doing now before crocheting the last round of the head. Now the head is nicely filled and actually we won't be needing the white yarn anymore so we can fasten this off. And then we can hide the white yarn end inside the head as well. Okay. 
if you're making a larger toy like more like a cuddly toy like a super large version of this with blanket yarn or something then maybe you want to secure it a bit better if you plan on washing it but these little ones um, aren't usually washed at least i don't put them in the washing machine so this this should be sufficient so now we just have one more round left and we decrease six times in a row one three giving this a little push four Five and six. So that's the last round done. Here we can fasten off. We don't need a long yarn, and here we'll be using the long yarn from the neck to attach the head. Just pull this through and close the round now, as we did before with the back. So we just take our yarn needle and go through the front loop of each of these six stitches pull that nice and tight and then we go through the center of this last round go through somewhere on the orange part of the head pull it nice and tight and then we'll just weave this yarn end in with a few stitches gentle squeeze and cut it short oh. <laughs> so that's the head done so next we're going to crochet the ears for the ears we make a chain of four one two three and four in the second chain here we make a single crochet and in the next chain we make a half double crochet so we yarn over to make a half double crochet in there then we make a double crochet in the same chain and another half double crochet in the same chain and then we make a single crochet in the last chain here and then we leave a long-ish yarn end for sewing the ear on and It's one ear done and now we just need to make another one of these and then we can go ahead and crochet the tail for the tail we make a chain of 20 one two three four five six seven eight 
So now all we do is single crochet one in each chain starting in the second one here. So you can pause the video here and hit play for row two. So that's the first row done. I just made one single crochet in each chain. So I have 19 stitches now. And in row two and three, we make a turning chain, turn a work around, and then single crochet one in each stitch. And that's row two done, just giving that a gentle pull. And we repeat this once more for row three, one turning chain, turning everything around and making 19 single crochet, one in each stitch. Row three is now done, so I'm just giving this another pull. And now we need a long yarn in here, not just for sewing on the tail, but also for sewing the tail together. So I'm leaving like 40 centimeters just in case, 16 inches. And now first we pull this through. Now we thread this long end on our yarn needle. And now we're going to sew it together lengthwise. So first I'll go through this corner here. And now we sew the other side of the base chain together with each corresponding stitch on the other side. So it would be this one. There we go. That's how we'll crochet together. And we just go up and down. So now I'm going through this side first and through the corresponding base chain back down. Now I'm going back up through the next base chain and the single crochet stitch on the opposite side of it. And then again down, starting with this single crochet and going through the next base chain. And so we continue this way until the tail is sewn together. The tail is sewn together now, so you can either use this yarn end to sew the tail on and weave this one in or the other way around. Now it's assembly time and for this our pins come in handy. So we'll start with the ears. 
we sew them on the head and so we attach them in between round eight and nine of the head so this is round six seven eight so somewhere here just behind the eyes I'm not sure where my fourth pin went or if I had one to begin with. <laughs> just using the sewing needle just to have a look at the placement of the ears. So um there should be about three Stitches space in between, so maybe this one can go a bit more outward. And this one a little bit more inward. One, two, three. Okay, I think that's looking good. So we can just start with one, one of these yarn ends. And just go through the head first. This needle can go already. And then go through the ear. And then again through the head. And through the ear. And back through the, through the head until the ear is completely attached on the base. Back through the ear. And making small stitches through the head. This can go. Now we just have this corner of the ear that needs to be attached. And then we go through the head once more. And weave in this yarn end. Don't have much yarn end left to be woven in, so we just insert the needle first. And then the yarn threaded the yarn end on. And that must be enough. It should be fine because we still have this yarn end to further secure the ear. So with this one, we can go through the head again. This time forward. And 
through the ear. Through the head. Through the ear. And through the head once more. And then we weave this yarn end in as well. And then we repeat these steps for the other ear. Now we can attach the head to the neck. But first we want to make sure that the neck is generously filled with fiber fill. I'm also using some yarn ends as filling, but we'll definitely need more than that. Once it's nicely filled, we can pin the head on the neck opening and we try to align this white part and the, the orange part. So let's just start by pinning the head in place and then we can check if it's in the right position. Just be careful with the pins. Don't poke yourself. Once you're sure you're happy with the placement of the head, you can go ahead and sew it on. I'm gonna start with the orange yarn end here. So, I'm threading this on my yarn needle and so I'm making a small stitch on the head just catching one loop possible and then I go through this first orange stitch here in this direction. That's just one way of sewing on body parts. Maybe you have a different method that you're using. Then Go through the head again and through the next orange stitch. And through the head again and so on.
once in a while it's a good idea to pause and make sure that the head is not crooked or anything like that. And now that I've gone through the last orange stitch here, I'll just go through the head. One last time with the orange yarn end. And I'll weave in this yarn end now. And so I just weave it in by following the stitch pattern. And then we cut it short. So with the white yarn, we actually have one stitch going back in that direction. So I'm going to sew backwards for first. So going through the head. And then through this white stitch there. And now I'm working in the other direction. So going through the head again. And then I go through this stitch here. And yeah, now I want to make sure that it's tilting a bit in the other direction. So I try to catch a loop that's a little bit further in the back so that it gets tilted in this direction, if that makes sense. Maybe I just go through here again. And then go through this stitch here. And then move on to the next spot, going through the head. And through the next stitch of the neck. And through the head again. And yeah, the, I'm trying to make the stitches to align 
stitches that are a bit shifted toward the right um when i go through the through the head i'm shifting a little to the right so that the head gets straightened out hopefully And this is the last white stitch. Let's see. Yeah, I think now it's almost straight. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, so that's fine. Now I go through the head one last time. And then I'm going to weave in this yarn end as well. Now that the head is attached, all that's left to do is sewing on the tail. When it comes to assembly, then we'll have lots of embroidery to do afterwards. But for now, we just pin the tail on the Rare, centered, let's see how that looks. Maybe a little higher up. And look centered. So once you're happy with that, um, the way I pinned it on is the seam of the tail is below and the other side above on top. And so now we just go through the body. Also, while sewing it on, I try to flatten it a bit, here on the base at least. That's it, that seems to be firmly attached now. So I'll just go ahead and weave in this yarn end.
And once that's done, we can go ahead and weave in the other yarn end as well. So now it gets interesting. We're going to start embroidering our tiger because now it doesn't look very much like a tiger yet. And so now we'll need a black embroidery floss and we start with the face. So for this, I'll be using around 60 centimeters, 24 inches. And now we need our large eyed sewing needle that is pointy again. And we thread this embroidery floss on our needle. And so now I'm just using my pattern as a guide. If you would like this pattern, it's linked down below. I have it available on Etsy and Ravelry. Um, that's the PDF version. I also have a Ribbler version of this pattern. If you'd like to see all these pictures in detail to help you with the embroidery. Um, I'm just using it as a guide because it doesn't really matter exactly where the stitches go since the coat of every tiger is different. Um, we don't need to make them all look identical, so it's just I just loosely follow along here. And so we start with the face. So I start here on the back of the head and I go through in between stitches here so I find a nice and big gap. This one works nicely because later we want to hide the ends and um, that's best if we just go through in between stitches, not stitching through the fibers, not catching any fibers. And now I just start above the eye. And here our actual embroidery starts. It's a bit easier with pliers here, but we should be fine without. Now I'm leaving a long enough end here to tie it together with the other end once we're done with the face embroidery. And so here the actual actual embroidery starts so here we want to make sure that we stitch through the fibers for maximum control over where the stitches go although like i said it's not that important um it's not um like when we embroidered the eyes or the nose each tiger can look a bit different I'll just make three stitches above the eye now. So that's one. This will make the other. And one last one, and then I'll just have a look where I want to come out for the next stitch. And that's just right next to the eye. So just a small stitch here. That's looking good. So now I'm just going on with the cheek so just make a stitch here make 
making a longer stitch and this direction direction of the nose Now I'll go through this same spot and then I aim for where the next stitch is supposed to start. So slightly above this spot here where it came out before. Sometimes the pliers come in handy. So now I have it, this kind of L shape here. Now I'm making a little line there. And it here in front of this L shape Moving up here, now we turn this into a smaller mirrored L shape exiting close to this little line there. And all of these things, like I said, um, that's just an example. You can embroider the, any kind of pattern you like. You can go by a photo. That's always what I do. I pick one really nice photo of the animal and then I just look at it and try to replicate that. So maybe you have a really beautiful tiger portrait or you find one online. I'm just going through here to extend this line a little bit. Going through here. making a long line like like a really big L shape now outside of this one And now, with the next stitch, I'll complete this big L shape and I'll exit here close to the ear because next I want to embroider along the ear here. So, that's one side of the face almost done with the ear. I just want the kind of the out line of the ear. I just want there to be like a little bit of black 
So I'll just go through every stitch of the ear here. And when you do that, don't pull the thread very tightly because that will kind of close the ear, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So we just loosely go through this to add some details to the ear. And that's it. So now I want to add some lines here to the forehead. So I'm just finishing with the ear here at the base of the ear. And then going through here to add some lines to the forehead and here again we shouldn't pull too hard otherwise the ear gets closed so now i'll just add some lines here so i'm just trying to find the center of the head here to make like a little or oh, very shallow upside down v-shape here but it doesn't have to be a v-shape it can be just a horizontal line or an actual v-shape instead of an upside down v-shape so Okay, I did this differently <laughs> than what I did in the pattern here, but that's okay. Like I said, it's just a guideline to help you, to help guide you through this embroidery step. So, now I'm just, here I'm just making a horizontal line. Um, yeah, and then I go on with the other side. I add a center line there in the end when I did the other side of the head. So now I'll go through this ear, through each stitch of this ear. And then I'm just trying to mirror what I did on the other side.
so three stitches above the eye. Then this L shape. So sometimes I just compare with the other side to make sure it's somewhat symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. And this line here. And making this mirrored small L shape. And then making this big L shape. And it goes around this one. So before I finish with the face, now I'm just noticing that this little V-shape is lower than this one. So I think it probably doesn't matter. But if something like this happens and it bothers you, you could actually add some more lines. You can just duplicate it so that you turn it into two. That would be a good chance to do that. So. I just see if I can add another one on top of that that's more on the level of this one. Another little V shape. And then here on the other side, I'll add one underneath.
so that wasn't planned for which is why I don't have that much embroidery floss left <laughs> but it may be enough we'll see we can always rejoin another piece of floss of course so it's another little v-shape underneath yeah I think that's working out nicely so the last thing for the face is just that I want to add another line here on the forehead before I finish off. Or actually I may add because this stitch kind of disappeared. I'll first go to the ear again. If I have enough, let's see how that works out and I'll just make another stitch through this ear first and then go through here to the forehead Again, not pulling too tight so the ear doesn't get closed and now with my last stitch I just make a horizontal line here on the forehead and now I'm going through this exact spot in between stitches trying to trying not to catch any fibers because then we can tie these thread ends together and hide them And that worked out nicely, even though I made some extra stitches. So that's good. Just pulling this up a bit to make sure all the fibers of the thread are equally long. Okay. So whenever there is a stitch that is kind of hidden, sometimes it works by just going under it and pulling it up a bit to make it appear more bold. So that's how my tiger's face looks now. I think that's looking good. So now we can tie these ends together and hide them. I'll just cut them a bit shorter first. And so now we just go through in between stitches close enough to get a hold of this thread ends. Just get them on your under your hook so that you can pull them through. Let's try that again. Just needs a good twist, and there we go. So now they're hidden inside, and so that's the face embroidered. Now we can go ahead and embroider the body. We're going to embroider the body in different sections, so we'll pro probably need all of our embroidery floss. Um, however, I find that if I use a longer piece than 80 centimeters or 32 inches, then it gets tangled up. So um, I just use several 80 centimeter, 32 inch long pieces. 
and every time I need a new one, I just rejoin it. So I'll be starting with the back and then move on to the legs and the belly and then um, we'll do some more details on the back and the tail and finish off with the back again. And so I'm starting with the back, uh, well I'm starting here on the belly actually because here we have these nice big gaps where it's easy to hide the, the ends in the end. And so that's where I'm starting. And I go through to the neck, one side of the neck, where my first stripe is gonna go. Pulling that through, and I just leave a long enough end to make a knot. Once we're done, so the first stripe is going to go here on the neck and now I'm just aiming for the center spot behind the head here because I want to make a line like this and so now I'm going through here and I'm mirroring what I did here on the other side, I'm at least more or less, doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going through the neck to repeat this on the other side. So now I'm going through the same spot again and going down here and kind of trying to mirror this spot here. And now I just need to make this connection. Then this first line is done. Also, what I'm trying to do is alternate between long and short lines. So this, I would say, is like a short line. And now I'm starting to make a shorter one. So I just go through making a small stitch here. That's the long line complete. And now I'm making a shorter line. So I just here try to more or less find the center spot. On the back. So that's a short little line and then I make this one on the other side as well. Next, close next to this spot. And while finishing this line, I already start the next long line. So that one is starting here on the foreleg. So going through all the way through there.
So from here on out, I'm just gonna silently finish embroidering the tiger. I mean, until there is something worth mentioning so that you can go ahead and <laughs> do your embroidery in peace. Put on some nice music or something. So once in a while you can add in some diamond shapes like I did here on the back and now I'm doing it here on the flank. So this is just to make the pattern more interesting. Here I'm just making, well it's, I don't know even if it can be called diamond shape, but like a really narrow diamond shape like this and then these two lines meet and continue as one and then i'll just repeat this on the other side mirror it here And whenever you run out of thread, um, just go through here, through the same spot that we started in. I'm just using this opportunity to make another stitch here or here for my pattern. And then 
I go through this spot here. Trying not to catch any loops this time. And as we did before, once we finished embroidering the head, we just tie the ends together and cut them a little bit shorter. Now we just find a spot that's reachable with our hook. Go through this same gap here with our hook and try to get hold of this knot that we just made to hide the thread ends inside. Almost done. That needs a second and third attempt. There we go. So then you just cut another 80 centimeter or 32 inch long piece of thread and continue where you finished off.
so now there's actually just one stitch to go uh, for embroidering the body um, at least the um, main stripes then next I'm gonna start making this shape along the spine and then I'll embroider the tail I just want to when making this last stitch here I actually I'm gonna go in and add some little stitches to this leg because that doesn't look um, doesn't look symmetrical so I'll just go through here and go back through the leg because that would be bothering me <laughs> in the end so now it's a good opportunity to fix that So if any stitch is too long, you can always just add onto it and make it look longer afterwards. So everything's fixable, I would say. There's no need to undo anything. Yeah, it's looking much better. So I'm just going through here and then I just make my way up to the neck. I'm not too far away now. Yeah, that's looking better now. And so actually I want to start at this spot here. So I'm just going to go through here again. To get through to where I want to start. So now I'm just going to make a line along the spine and I connect all these stripes to each other on one side so I'm going to make two, um, two of these lines close to each other and you'll see what I mean in a bit just wherever there's a stripe I'll just go under it just to anchor in the embroidery thread, make a tiny stitch there to attach it to that spot. And this way I just connect all of these spots here on this side. And whenever there is such a diamond shape, I actually go under the full diamond shape because I don't want that one interrupted. Actually, that could have connected here. I'm not sure why I left some space there, but that's fine. So here, this line is interrupted, which is what I'm going for. Now going through under here and here we have another diamond shape so I'm going through here so that this line gets interrupted and the diamond shape doesn't. One tiny stitch here 
and one tiny stitch here. So now I need to assess how much thread I have left. So normally I would go ahead and embroider the tail now, but I think this is not enough thread. So instead I'm going to finish this um, embroidery along the spine first. So the order doesn't really matter. In my written pattern I do it differently. It all depends how much thread you have left. So with this I don't get far with the tail. So instead I finish this part first. So now I'm doing the same, connecting all the stripes again, this time on the other side of the spine. So this way we'll have two lines close to each other. Whenever there's a diamond shape, I go under it like this. And I'm just making all these little stitches to anchor in the thread. Because it's more secure when you make lots of tiny stitches. And that also helps with the next step, which I'll show you in just a bit. So there we go, now we have these two lines next to each other and now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to connect them into one bold line. So I'm going through both of these here in this next little segment, pull this through. Now I'm moving on to the next segment and going under them and pulling tight to connect the two. Going through this one twice because there was a bit longer distance. Here I might just go through once, just going through under these two stitches I just made or maybe once more through the same spot and then moving on to the next and to the next doesn't matter if you catch some of the orange yarn fibers Going through here again. And here comes this diamond pattern that I don't want to interrupt. So I'll just go through underneath there. and continue here on the other side of it. So sometimes I might go through it more often just to Connect the two lines. So 
So what we want is one bold line here along the spine. Here we have the diamond shape again, so I'm going under, making a stitch underneath. To keep that intact. Last one is a bit tricky here, just make another stitch to cover this. And so now we have this bold line along the back and I don't have any more thread so I'll bring my thread to this spot where I joined this one and then I'll join a new one for embroidering the tail. Since I only have the tail left to embroider, I only cut a 24 inch 60 centimeter long thread for this. Just gonna join that somewhere here. I'm going through to the base of the tail. And so now I'm just going to make lots of stripes along the top of the tail. And the way I do this is I just go through it like so. So that's the first one. So I just make kind of small diagonal stitches to make these stripes. So I enter the needle aiming for the opposite of this where the stitch begins just to make sure the um, stripe is straight, like um, horizontal and not diagonal. So that's why I'm making the stitches here diagonal. So once in a while we can have a look and check how it looks. We can make them as close together or far apart as you like. Here at the end of the tail I'm trying to make them a bit denser again. The stripes. And then with the last st stripe, just go and stitch through the 
to the top of the tail because now we add this, we extend this layer along the spine on the top of the tail. And so again, I'm trying to make to go under the um, stripes, but also while doing that, catch some of the orange yarn fibers to anchor in my stitches to keep them in place where I want them to be. And while doing that, you can use the tension of the thread to curl the tail a bit if you want the tip of the tail to be a bit curled up. You can do that by applying some tension here on the end of the tail. go and now we can release the tension again oh that went wrong <laughs> so we kind of just weave the thread through these horizontal stripes. Almost there. So now we just connect these two long lines by going through this same spot here and stitching through to where we joined this thread. And that's it, that's all connected now. I'm not pulling this one too tightly because I don't want the tail pointing up. If you want that, you can do that, but I like it to be like this. So now we just need to hide these last two thread ends. And then our little tiger is complete. I just noticed that I forgot to add the little stripes on the back of the ears. That's what happens if you stop looking at your own pattern and just go freestyle. <laughs> so I just used them. I'm just using a short thread. For this, I'll just make three little stitches to each ear. I should be more careful here not to 
poke myself with the needle so I just make three little stripes here going through the ear and I try to stitch through the fiber so that it's not too visible from this side and second stripe and the third little stripe going through to the other ear here again we want to be careful not to pull too tightly so that we don't mess with the shape of the ears and now I'm just adding three stripes here this one Two and a little one on top. Now I go back through to this spot here where I first joined the thread. So now we need to be careful not to pull this thread too tightly and that's it now we just need to hide this and that's it our little tiger is now complete thank you so much for crocheting along with me I'm so proud of you this wasn't an easy project very well done if you enjoyed it please like this video for me and comment below if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to say about this tutorial also feel free to share your creation on instagram or facebook and tag me at stella's yarn universe so that i can give you a big thumbs up over there and like i said if you would like to see the written pattern there is a free version on my website. You can find the link in the description box below. And there are also links to the PDF version and to the Ribla version. So once again, thank you so much for crocheting along. Also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so that you get notified of future tutorials. And yeah so that you can see my polls that i do so that you can vote on my next project and so with that being said happy crocheting and see you next time bye